46, which was enacted on October 5th, 2010, we will present a gold medal uh, to Professor Muhammad Yunus in recognition of his contributions to the fight against global poverty. We're pleased to have with us enough leaders and leaders from around the world, and of course, we're honored today to be joined by Professor Yunus. Ladies and gentlemen, the representative from the 12th District of New Jersey, the Honorable Rush Holt. Mr. Speaker, Madam Leader, Mr. Minority Leader, Mr. Majority Leader, Distinguished Mr. Muhammad Yunus. We gather to honor Dr. Muhammad Yunus, who has a long career confounding expectations and conventional knowledge of bankers, business leaders, economists, and yes, public officials like us. We recognize a career in a man who have shown most of us to be wrong in important ways. Despite much attention and international honors that have come over recent decades to Professor Yunus, most of us still have trouble believing that his work and his ideas are right, or if they are right, that they have general applicability. So revolutionary is the work of this banker, economist, and visionary. Banker, revolutionary, visionary are not words that are commonly associated with each other. Yet millions of times, Dr. Yunus has demonstrated, demonstrated with facts, evidence, and accomplishment, that grand social goals can be pursued one person at a time by using practices that are completely contrary to what businesses have practiced for ages. Contrary to the old saying that bankers loan money only to people who don't need it, only to people who demonstrate through collateral that they have money, Dr. Yunus has loaned millions to poor people who have not shown marketable skills or facility in handling money. Dr. Yunus turned the old view of banking on its head with several ingenious insights. The insights were that bankers can do very well lending money to people who need it most. That traditional standards of a person's worthiness for credit can be counterproductive. And that a little help, a small amount of capital, can unlock a person's product, productive capacity and put the person on the path to economic and personal success. These insights were neither obvious nor easy to apply. Born and educated in what is today Bangladesh, he lived and taught for a while in the United States before returning to Bangladesh to develop his revolutionary ideas for banking and business. He applied his insights on ever larger scales, confronting skepticism and opposition along the way. He built a banking business that thrived, lifted millions of people out of poverty, and provided a model for similar work around the world. Professor Yunus has worked to transform our understanding of the nature of business so that we can recognize that it is about people, multidimensional people, and about their quality of life more than it is about dollars. Capitalistic business can thrive and surpass expectations if it modifies the bottom line to include social and humanitarian gains as well as monetary profit. The business he, pri he pioneered Social business, as Professor Yunus calls it, is not soft-hearted charity, but rather hard-headed business. The business that improves the quality of life of people is no less serious and should be held to no lower standards than business that considers only the monetary bottom line. Having won the arguments that traditional credit worthiness is not the same as worthiness as a person, that recognizing human dignity is good for business, that social business is good business, and that economic development is for people, not institutions, Dr. Yunus is now developing his model for eliminating poverty, not simply alleviating poverty, eliminating poverty. Does this sound preposterously idealistic? 
to many it does. However, we would do well to listen to someone who has such a clear, remarkable record of exploding long-cherished myths about business, money, and poverty. What should we do with someone who has exposed our blind spots, who has shown us to be unimaginative and narrow-minded, who has shown us quite simply to be wrong? We should give gratitude and honor, and today we do, and we should continue to listen. Ladies and gentlemen, the representative from the 27th District of Florida, the Honorable Ileana ross Leitonen. Thank you. What an honor and a privilege to bestow the Congressional Gold Medal to Dr. Mohammed Yunus, and it is our congressional colleagues who help make this dream a reality. It is the highest expression of appreciation that Congress can bestow to acknowledge a person's achievements and contributions to society and Dr. Eunice has transformed the lives of so many across the globe. As Americans in the land of opportunity, it has long been our desire to extend the American dream path to help people achieve their dreams through their own hard work and their own dedication. Dr. Eunice understands that what prevents many underprivileged people from achieving success can be the opportunity to break free from the depths of despair and grow and explore their full potential. And from that understanding grew Grameen Bank because creating opportunity is the very essence of Grameen Bank. It creates opportunity by providing credit to the poor, opening doors to possibilities that they previously never thought achievable. Dr. Yunus and the Grameen Bank have provided so many, first in Bangladesh, with that opportunity to achieve, and in doing so, empowered millions in poverty and inspired a generation. This has been a model replicated with great success throughout the world, helping to create opportunities for millions to rise out of poverty. As we in the U.S. look to use the best practices and improve the efficiencies of our assistance programs to help those in poverty, we'll study the model of Dr. Yunus to establish microcredit enterprise opportunities that can be effective tools to provide real assistance to those in the greatest need. And while there is still much work that needs to be done to tackle global poverty, I am hopeful that many others will continue to draw inspiration to empower the most vulnerable and make this world a better place. Congratulations, Dr. Yunus. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Senator from the state of Wyoming, the Honorable Michael Enzi. Speaker, Mr. Leader, distinguished guests, and friends of Professor Mohammed Yunus. I want to share some stories with you that I heard from Professor Yunus and that are confirmed in a book called Banker to the Poor. Our recipient, of course, was born in Bangladesh and he came to the United States and taught in Tennessee and he watched the revolution happen in Bangladesh and was pleased with the outcome and he returned there to teach at the university. That's where he'd gotten his undergraduate degree. And as he taught economics, he was challenged by students that the theories would not work on the micro level. He met the challenge by visiting the nearby village. The first person he ran into was a lady weaving stools from reeds while she took care of her children. He found out that she was given about 27 cents worth of reeds. First loan was for 27 cents for materials so that he, she could sell it on the open market and she got over a dollar for it. Professor Yunus concentrated on the poorest of the poor to just the poor, and mostly women. Credit given to a woman brings about change faster than when it's given to a man. 
If one member of a family has to starve, you know it would be the mother. They cannot read or write and have rarely been allowed to step out of their homes alone. Poor women. They work harder to lift themselves and their families out of poverty. Now, when a destitute mother starts earning income, her dreams of success invariably center around her children. I remember Professor Eunice uh, saying that he'd asked a, a lady what she was going to do with this extra money that she had. And he found out it wasn't going to get a better shelter. It wasn't to get more food. It wasn't to send kids to college. With tears in his eyes, he said it was actually to be able to buy a child back. Can we even imagine that? His concentration has been on bringing women out of poverty. Women would have to form a group and guarantee each other's loans and understand the principles and the repayment method. The economist, as a part of this experiment, found that 75% of the people couldn't read or write. So filling out a form to start a bank account was a ridiculous requirement. He wondered why banks couldn't just take the money and give them a receipt. And then when they needed money, show the receipt and get their money back. Mr. Yunus believes that collateral is a proven willingness to work. Five women can form a banking group. All five members have to present themselves to the bank and undergo seven days of training on policies, demonstrate their understanding of those policies, and then pass an oral examination. Each individual is tested. If one fails, they all have to go back and study some more. What they're looking for are courageous and ambitious pioneers. The first loan is usually about $25 in the 80s. The recipient would be terrified with the huge fear of failure. No woman in her extended family had ever had so much money. The whole package, the experiment that grew, is social economics at its best. Successful sense of community that's spreading around the world Thanks to Mohammed Yunus. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Senator from the state of Illinois, the Honorable Richard J. Durbin. Professor Yunus, the Yunus family, members of Congress, and distinguished guests. It was about 20 years ago when I visited a ramshackled hut in Uganda. I met with three mothers who were working in the local market. I asked them through an interpreter how microcredit had changed their lives. One woman said, my knees have gone soft. I didn't understand what she meant, so I asked her to explain. She said that before she received the microcredit loan that gave her a chance to go to the market and make a little money, she used to have to crawl on her knees and beg her husband for money to feed the children. But she didn't have to crawl anymore. Her knees had gone soft. It's been said that almost anyone can make something complicated it takes a genius to make something simple. My friends, make no mistake, Muhammad Yunus is a genius. His breakthrough theories of microlending shattered the stereotype of the poor. In his world of microbanking, there was a vast collateral that no banker had ever seen. He defied cultural prejudice by giving most of the loans to women in a society where, at the time, women seldom even touched money or worked outside the home. Over the last four decades, micro-lending has helped tens of millions of people to take the first steps out of grinding poverty. It has turned beggars into business owners. It has fortified families. It has brought dignity and hope, and it has fundamentally changed the way most of the world sees the poor. Not since the miracle of the loaves and fishes has anyone done so much with so little to feed so many. I first met Professor Yunus over 20 years ago. I knew at once 
that the ideas that emerged from his classroom were not only life-changing, they were world-changing. Now, many of us expected Professor Yunus to get many recognitions, even perhaps the Nobel Prize for Economics. In 2006, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. The Nobel Committee recognized that lasting peace and prosperity can only come when the poor can escape the prison of poverty. This lesson from a Bangladeshi professor should not be lost in the halls of this capital. Muhammad Yunus is one of only seven people ever to receive the Nobel Peace Prize, the Presidential Medal of Freedom, and the Congressional Gold Medal. And my friends, he is the first Muslim ever to be awarded the Congressional Gold Medal. This is indeed a happy and historic day. On the back of the medal is a quote chosen by Professor Yunus from his Nobel lecture. In English, it reads, let us put poverty in the museum. <laughs> Muhammad, Yunus, Muhammad Yunus understands that alleviating poverty is not only a gesture of charity, it is an act of justice and freedom. It is the protection of a fundamental human right, the right to dignity and a decent life. I was honored to introduce the Senate bill awarding Professor Yunus the gold medal, and I am deeply honored to call him my friend. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Democratic leader of the United States House of Representatives, the Honorable Nancy Pelosi. Good morning. Mr. Speaker, Leader Reid, Leader McConnell, my distinguished colleagues, all of our very special guests, especially our special guest, Dr. Muhammad Yunus and his family. Dr. Yunus, as we all have been told, is a Nobel laureate. He has received the Presidential Medal of Freedom. He is a visionary, and as Monica has sung to us, a dreamer, a beautiful dreamer. He is a dreamer with a plan, and that's why we are honoring him today. <laughs> today, he adds another title recipient of the highest honor Congress can bestow, the Congressional Gold Medal, quote, in recognition of his contribution in the fight against global poverty, the biggest compliment I can give, <laughs> to offer loans to the poor to start their own businesses. Its success is rooted in large part in the power and potential of women. I can't help but think how happy our Eunice's innovative thinking and imagination. That cause is a central component of U.S. assistance to families beyond our borders. Our colleagues have mentioned how his work, his leadership has served as a model. Over the past two decades, members of Congress have led in a bipartisan way to provide the support and funding for successful micro-enterprise initiatives in developing countries. Representatives like Nita Lowy, Ben Gilman, Chris Smith, Tim Romer, now Senator Sherrod Brown, and members of the new Democratic Coalition have strengthened these initiatives over the years. Working together, we have provided the resources to help move more than 150 million individuals, give them access to financial services and microcredit in the poorest countries of the world. USAID has taken the lead in executing this effort, and we are proud to be joined today by USAID Administrator Rajiv Shah 
uh, when President Obama appointed him, President Obama, a big supporter of microlending, he appointed a strong advocate for empowering the world's poorest people in the world's poorest communities. Together, uh, we have made Muhammad Yunus's simple idea a cornerstone of our comprehensive approach to fighting global poverty. Knowing that our efforts to improve health and education are most successful when we foster new businesses and economic growth. Thank you, Professor Yunus, for leading the way. For Mohammed Yunus, empowering women and alleviating poverty are essential ingredients to ending conflict and promoting peace. As he has said, peace should be understood in a human way because peace begins with people, with enabling people to care for themselves and their families and take ownership over their futures. Peace is possible when individuals have the freedom to pursue their dreams, when all people have the chance to reach their God-given potential. From the villages of Bangladesh to the halls of the Nobel Committee to the corridors of, pa of power across the globe, Professor Muhammad Yunus has challenged the conscience of the world. He has inspired us in his belief that ending poverty is possible. Ending poverty is necessary. Ending poverty is our moral responsibility. For his vision, for his leadership, for his efforts to unleash the power of human potential, especially among women, it is an honor to join my colleagues today to award Professor Yunus with the Congressional Gold Medal. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Republican leader of the United States Senate, the Honorable Mitch McConnell. Over the years, countless men and women have worked hard to reduce the scourge of poverty in the world because they understand that poverty breeds fear, anxiety, and hopelessness, that it crushes dreams, tramples ambition, and holds societies back. But while we've long agreed on the desirability of the goal, its attainment has remained elusive. Over time, we've made enormous advances. Starting in the West, the rise of free markets and free people helped build a ladder to a better life for many millions of men and women who had only known hardship before. More recently, that freedom has spread throughout the developing world knocking down government barriers to progress and advancing miracles of prosperity in its wake. Miracles we could hardly have imagined just a few decades ago. Yet despite these gains, despite the fact that many have been freed from despair and entire diseases have been wiped off the planet, the struggle against global poverty continues. Some look at the enormity of the problem and literally throw up their hands. Others cling to the outdated notion that government alone can solve. Most of the loans they received were small, about $100, listeners. Beggars became traveling salesmen. Mothers sold nutrition packed yogurt to neighbors and provided phone and telecommunication services to villages that rarely saw either. More than just helping themselves, these budding entrepreneurs helped transform their communities by fighting, fighting malnourishment and spreading technologies that helped open their towns and villages to a wider world and helped bring the wider world to them. 
With an approximate total loan volume of $25 billion, the microfinance sector that Dr. Yunus inspired serves an estimated 100 million people across the world. One of them is a Haitian woman named Odette. Odette once lived alone and couldn't afford to feed her three children. But after taking out small loans from one of Dr. Yunus' partner banks in Haiti, she developed a thriving second-hand mattress business. This allowed her to not only feed her children, not only to move them out of a leaky house, but to acquire properties on her own and rent them out, gaining more hope and confidence than any government program could have ever provided. I used to go around begging, she said. Now people can't understand how I do it. This is the power of microfinance. This is the power of Mohammed Yunus audacious idea. We may not eliminate poverty tomorrow or next week or over the next decade, but if we're dedicated to the task, if we have the courage to move beyond old ways of thinking, we can come closer than many before us could have dreamed. Mohammed Yunus is proving that, and so are the millions he's inspired and empowered around the world. Congratulations, Dr. Yunus, on a well-deserved recognition. Ladies and gentlemen, the Majority Leader of the United States Senate, the Honorable Harry Reid. Times bestselling list written by Sheryl Sandberg called Lean In, which encourages women to excel in the business world. Professor Yunus' work has truly allowed many impoverished women around the world to lean in. Still, Professor Yunus' achievement is not measured in dollars, loaned, and cents repaid. It's measured in lives, lives saved, and lives changed for the better. And the professor has said, and I quote, <clears throat> excuse me, without the human side, economics is just as hard and dry as stone. Professor Yunus, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> congratulations on your achievement and thank you for your generous contributions to the world that we share. Ladies and gentlemen, the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, the Honorable John Boehner. Let me thank uh, my colleagues for their fine words, and in a few moments we'll present Professor Yunus uh, with the gold medal. What makes this uh, medal so unique, uh, so American, is that we can go to anyone from anywhere. It's not an award we only give to generals and to presidents, because one thing that makes America uh, more than a country is the idea that you don't need a, a big job or a fancy title to do something bigger than yourself. A professor you just set out to do, but uh, what may be the biggest thing of all, and that is liberating people to seek a better life. And not just any people, but men and women who had only known misery and only those who had been told uh, that they were no good. And to do all this, he first had to teach himself how to run a bank from scratch. Uh, that's when he realized that he had to do the exact opposite of what bankers normally do to make an idea work. Then there was actually getting people to borrow the money, to see the value in themselves, to spark the sense of wonder. Then he had to convince them uh, to, uh, that they didn't need rank or status to advance themselves in their place in life. And then, of course, there were all the skeptics. Uh, one banker uh, called his experiment nothing, a fly speck. Another said, it's not really a bank. 
Uh, it depends too much on Professor Eunice's personality. We can't have a Eunice in every branch. Right then and there, in front of a table full of bankers, Professor Eunice drew, drew up a five-year uh, expansion plan for his experiment and challenged uh, them to choose areas that he could never reach all at once. Of course, his plan succeeded, and millions around the world are better for it. Yes, the idea is the thing, but as the paintings on these walls around us remind us, it's the hard work and sacrifice that separates the doers from the dreamers. And so for Professor Muhammad Yunus, a revolutionary in his own right, the United States men have struck a gold medal, which we will present with awe and wonderment. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated for the presentation of the Congressional Gold Medal by members of the United States Congress. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Mohammed Yunus. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 What an amazing experience for any human being. And all the beautiful words the leaders of this country was speaking about me. I just can't hold my tears. And all the, li all the time that I was trying to tell people how I feel this is an important thing to pay attention to. Today I come to this August Hall. I hear the endorsement in the loudest voice, in the most powerful voice possible. That is self the greatest award that I could receive anywhere, anytime. And thank you very much for saying these words and endorsing these ideas. I came to this Capitol Hill many years back in 1971. I had no idea what this whole complex is all about. Totally puzzled. <laughs> I came as a desperate young man because peoples were being killed in my country and we declared our country as an independent country, Bangladesh. U.S. was not supporting our cause. So I, I was teaching, I was 31 year old, teaching in Middle Tennessee State University, left my job, settled down in Washington just to lobby at every single senator, every single congressman that I could hold, could hold of. In the process, I became an expert in the geography of this Capitol Hill. It's a very complex 
geography and the topography of it, underground, overground, and all that. I could be very good congressional assistant any, for anybody. <laughs> I'd do a very good job. So I learned a lot about the system that it works here. I was amazed when the government was opposing the cause of Bangladesh, congressmen, senators supporting our cause. So I see that is a completely different thing that I never heard that it could be possible. They were standing for us. So my job is to bring from the constituencies of each senator, each congressman, to come here, guide them to the senator's office, congressman's office, and give them the briefing note what they should be telling to their congressmen to support us. And tremendous amount of support that we build up in this country from the people while the government is opposed to it. I'll never forget that. I come back again in 1984, 85 for a different cause. This time I'm invited to tell my story about Grameen Bank. Nobody knew about it at that time. A group called Results. Nobody heard of them. <laughs> with, with some crazy music teacher from Florida, <laughs> Sam Daly Harris, pushing this. Microcredit is the answer. So I'm brought into many congressional hearings, subcommittee hearings, committee hearings to present what I have experienced. And that built up a tremendous momentum for the whole movement of microfinance. Today, when we talk about 100 million, 150 million people taking micro loan because what you have done in this Congress, the support you provided behind it, and the most passionate volunteers of results mobilizing forces to bring this information to every congressman, every senator. Thank you, results volunteer here and every results volunteer everywhere else. Get rid of them, just loan yourself. So I started loaning from my own pocket. And that was the beginning of the whole idea of microcredit. Today we are celebrating. And it expanded and impacted and got all over the world. Today I'm so happy that it can penetrate in every mind, the policymaker's mind. And I'm very happy today. I come back after 37 years after I created Grameen Bank to receive this wonderful honor that you gave me today, endorsing what I have done. And I'm receiving it not for me, for all these women who worked so hard to make, believe, make you convinced they can take care of themselves. Given the support, the financial, institutional support, not charity, support for the right kind of an institution to help them to do the things they can do. So I'm receiving this award on behalf of those millions of those women in Bangladesh and also on behalf of all the people of Bangladesh because it's not only a It's not only an honor personally for me, it's an honor for the whole country of Bangladesh and the very hardworking people of Bangladesh. They want to make a difference in their lives. All we want to do, all we need to do is to provide them the right kind of support. And I'm very happy to come back today. Members, happy that Monica could sing. It's beautiful.
and we just crossed the million solar home system in Bangladesh in last November. It's a business, but business do not make money. That's what another thing I bring out. People are poor, not because something is wrong with them. Poverty is not created by poor people. Poverty is created by the system we have built. And here is the place where system is built. So we have to look back where we went wrong. If we fix our system, nobody in the world will be a poor person. Nothing is wrong in the poor people. Each human being is packed with unlimited creative capacity. And I give the example of a bonsai tree. I said, take the seed of the tallest tree in the forest, put it in a flower pot, put the seed in the flower pot. It will grow this big. It's a cute little tree. We call it bonsai. I said, poor people are bonsai people. There is nothing wrong in their seed. They could be as tall as anybody in the world. Simply don't put them into that flower pot. Give them the space so that they can grow. That's where the system is. So we created all the business to make money. We created a money-centric world. We became money-making robots. I said human beings are not robots. We're multidimensional beings. We make money, fine, we do that. But at the same time, we can use business to solve problems. And I give examples what I do. Microcredit should be kind of a footnote someplace. We can change the world where nobody should be a poor person. I'm very happy, congressmen and senators and leaders of both parties, to put these words in the medal that we can put poverty in the museum. That's what those words in the medal says. And let's believe in it. Let's make it happen. So that someday soon we'll visit the museums to see poverty because we'll never see poverty in the society because it doesn't belong to civilized human society. And similarly, we should create a world where nobody will be an unemployed person. There's nothing wrong with human beings. Why should anybody be unemployed? Then why is that person unemployed? Because we cannot create a system which makes it happen. So system is making people suffer for not any fault of them. If there is a fault in the system, it's our responsibility to fix it so that everybody can be a productive, creative human being as they are supposed and they are capable of. Let's create a world, nobody will be an unemployed person. Let's create a world where nobody will die unnecessarily. Nobody will suffer for unnecessary diseases because today science and technology brings us all the facilities in the world to deliver health care at home at the person level. We don't have to go through the old-fashioned ways of big machines, hospitals and clinics and everything else. It can be done with a mobile phone or as simple as that. So I hope today the experience that we have in this occasion and a great, great honor that you give to the idea that we can create a world much better than what we have. Let's believe in it and make it happen. And thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing.
I come back again in 1984, 85 for a different cause. This time I'm invited to tell my story about Grameen Bank. Nobody knew about it at that time. A group called Results. Nobody heard of them. <laughs> with, with some crazy music teacher from Florida, <laughs> Sam Daly Harris, pushing this. Microcredit is the answer. So I'm brought into many congressional hearings, subcommittee hearings, committee hearings to present what I have experienced. And that built up a tremendous momentum for the whole movement of microfinance. Today, when we talk about 100 million, 150 million people taking micro loan because what you have done in this Congress, the support you provided behind it, and the most passionate volunteers of results mobilizing forces to bring this information to every congressman, every senator. Thank you, results volunteer here and every, every volunteer everywhere else.